Hello, this is video number eight in the series Mastering the INCOSI System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the INCOSI System Engineering Professional Exam. Video number eight covers the implementation process, chapter 4.7. So as we introduced in the previous um, videos, the systems that we're building are inherently complex and they're going to be uh, developed and operated in complex life cycles. And so to manage that uh, complexity, um, the system engineering approach has uh, life cycle processes and activities that can be used to ensure success. The system engineering handbook has identified 59 system engineering life cycle processes and activities. And those are categorized into seven groups. The subject of this short video is the implementation process. That's uh, part of the technical processes in chapter four. So if you've watched the other videos, you know that uh, we have developed uh, business or mission uh, plans, uh, done stakeholder needs analysis, and developed uh, requirements with an, an OpsCon. Uh, we've got system requirements, architecture, and design. And now we are ready to implement the system. Um, so the system engineering handbook has this notion of a system being composed of subsystems and those subsystems being composed of elements. And the idea here is that the elements are going to be implemented and then integrated together to uh, form a system that's subsequently verified and validated. Um, as a system engineer, you, you're either going to work for a system integrator or prime, in which case the implementation is outsourced. So your organization may not actually build, implement, fabricate the element. It'll be outsourced to, to the supply chain that will then return it for integration. Or alternatively, you may work for um, one of the uh, companies in the supply chain that's responsible for fabricating the, the element. This video um, answers the questions, what is the purpose of the implementation process? Uh, what are the outputs, inputs, and processes? Uh, discusses types of implementation and also uh, for implementation system engineering methods. So implementation uh, processes uh, can be categorized in the following uh, four ways. Um, the, the, the basic way of implementation is to fabricate the piece parts and then assemble them together. And that would be kind of taking raw materials or starting to write code from scratch to develop the, the elements. The second level up from that, so to speak, is to, um, is to purchase uh, piece parts from supply chain vendors and then assemble them. And that would be part of the implementation process. A third type is um, to take a, a system that your organization that has developed that's flexible in the way it can be configured. So you would take this system off the shelf, uh, change the configuration to meet the requirements, and then uh, provide that to the uh, prime or the system integrator. So that adaptation or configuration of system elements is known as modifiable off the shelf or MOTS. And then the last is that uh, you just have your product already built, it meets the requirements, and that would be commercial off the shelf or uh, COTS, or government off the shelf GOTS. The difference between the COTS and the GOTS is that the commercial off the shelf will meet industry civilian standards, whereas the government off the shelf will meet military standards. So the System Engineering Handbook defines implementation process as um, the process to realize a specified system element and creates or fabricates a system element conforming to the element's detailed requirements, architecture, design, and interfaces. So in plain language, this is the part, this is the process where you're going to build the element, uh, hardware, software, mechanical. And again, your organization may actually be doing the building or it may outsource it to, to the supply chain who are going to do, be doing the, the building. Um, the process is uh, fairly straightforward. As you can imagine, the output is a system element um, that is, uh, is generated by uh, implementation, by performing implementation steps. 
And then to do that, you need the inputs um, of the architecture, the design description, and of course the interface definitions. So there are four uh, system engineering methods that are used during this process. The first two are in this chart, and then there's two more in the following chart. The first two are the integrated product development team and, uh, the, and inspections. So the IPDT is a multidisciplinary group of people that are responsible for delivering the divine product or process. And they're going to make sure that the product meets the highest quality standards and that there's no waste in the production implementation of the system. The main task of this multidisciplinary group is to resolve issues quickly uh, without creating problems elsewhere. So back in the old days, the engineering team would throw the design over the fence and the manufacturing team would take the design documents and build, implement, manufacture the, the product. And of course, no design document is perfect, so they would have questions and there would be no way to quickly resolve those, those issues. In addition to that, the manufacturing uh, team may look at the design and say, hey, you know, we could use an alternate piece part here, or what if we reconfigured this? Um, uh, you know, we could reduce the implementation time, uh, maybe even improve the product quality. So, so in the process of manufacturing, issues come up, and the idea is that if you have the engineering teams there, system, hardware, software, um, supply chain representatives, uh, you know, accounting, um, all of the, the people responsible for the manufacturing process, that these issues can be surfaced quickly and then, and then dealt with. So that's the idea of the integrated product development team. Um, this, the second uh, system engineering method is that of ins inspections. And the idea here is to make sure that the implementation is meeting requirements so there'd be timely review of the implementation as it's going along and double checking to make sure that the requirements have been met and or that the requirements do not need to be modified. The second uh, pair of system engineering methods are in the category of product process improvement, P squared I. Um, the first is something that's called out in the handbook as lean manufacturing and the second item called out in the system engineering handbook is designed for Six Sigma. So lean manufacturing has a long history, uh, starting off with Frederick uh, Taylor. Um, obviously, Ford uh, used this in development of the Model T. And then um, this was uh, widely adopted in Japanese engineering and manufacturing. Shigeo Shingo and Taiichi Ono are famous for their work that they did at Toyota on the, what later became known as the Toyota production system. And as that evolved over time, uh, John Krafchick is credited with the term uh, lean manufacturing. The whole idea here in lean manufacturing is to avoid the situation where you're going to just uh, rote perform a manufacturing activity. And the idea is to really think about how it fits into the overall process and then eliminate what was known as the seven wastes. Um, and those wastes are not only material wastes, um, scraps, uh, re, you know, redos, but also uh, time and, and um, uh, optimizing the utilization of the resources. Um, so that's lean manufacturing. Uh, the second is, is, is designed for Six Sigma, and this should not be confused with the Six Sigma black belt. Six Sigma black belt typically takes an existing process or an existing product and uses uh, statistical methods to improve it. Design for Six Sigma is kind of a spin-off on that in the sense that design for Six Sigma is to make sure that the, uh, the product that's developed, in this case implemented, meets the, the uh, needs of the, uh, the customer and the requirements in the design. So the uh, design for Six Sigma has this uh, cyclical process of uh, define, measure, analyze, design, and verify, DMADV, um, that, that's used. All right, so those are the four system engineering implementation methods. Um, integrated product development team, inspections, and then lean manufacturing and design for Six Sigma. 
So we've come to the end of the video. Uh, here's a short quiz to see what you know. Um, at this point, um, pause the video, get a pencil and paper, and see if you can answer these questions. And then once you've done, uh, you can um, run the video again and go to the next slide to check your answers. So here are the answers to the See What You Know quiz for the implementation process. So pause the video, check your answers. And when you're ready, you can uh, hit run again. So thank you for the um, for participating in the implementation process video. Uh, that's what we have just completed, the implementation process. The next video is the integration uh, process. So if you liked the video, if you could give us a thumbs up, we'd much appreciate it. Thank you.